Two years ago this November, a mentally handicapped man takes a walk near his Rogers City home and is never seen again. We've searched the waterway, the coast, uh, coast of Lake Huron. Um, you know, helicopters were up. They searched all the areas with water, and we're just coming up with nothing. More than 25 years ago in Charlevoix County, her car in the driveway, purse and keys inside her home, but this elderly woman is nowhere to be found. We obviously were on foot. We had horse patrols come out. We did aerial views. There was no way we could find Ms. Salish on that property. Go back even further, more than 40 years ago near Grayling. This man's car found running with the door wide open right along I-75. But the driver isn't inside. There was snow on the ground at the time and there were no tracks to be seen or anything like that. So uh, Perry was just missing. Three mysteries, three of the nearly 4,000 missing person cases in Michigan. After the initial search is called off and local police scale back their efforts, there's one detective who's still looking. That was a DNA hit, though. Michigan State Police Detective Sarah Krabs has seen it all in her 15 years on the job. Runaways are pretty common for, for kids to run away. We have family members that are voluntary missing. Sometimes we find that the cases have never been reported to law enforcement. Whether it looks like someone took off on their own or was taken, she's working to bring them home. That could mean an interview and a little artwork or giving new life to the dead. It's a lot of uh, anth anthropology. It is um, a lot of um, artistic guesswork. It's just having an eye for uh, the structure of the skull. But you might be surprised to know she spends a lot of her time right here. It's not a specialized set of skills that I have. It is just connecting dots. And she does it with the help of two databases, one for missing persons cases, the other for unidentified remains. When a connection is made, it obviously isn't the outcome families want, but when someone's been missing for decades, their loved ones just want closure. Across the board, most of them have always told me that they would rather know than not know, even if it's bad news. And those loved ones, the families of those who vanished, are Sarah's biggest source of motivation. Um, a lot of them uh, don't know how to move on from it. So they can't change their phone number. They won't move from the home that the missing person went missing from. Um, they're basically imprisoned by that case. But they're not alone. There are other families who've suffered just like them. An upcoming event spearheaded by Detective Krebs will bring them together to realize that. This is the only time really that they meet other families that are going through the same traumatic event that they are and um, it's incredibly healing for them. It's the fifth annual Michigan Missing Persons Day, a chance for detectives to gather DNA, conduct interviews, possibly even reignite an investigation with new tips and information, and maybe, just maybe, bring someone home alive. We do identify a lot of the dead, but it's great when we can find one of them living as well. And for this detective, that's what makes all of her hard work worth it. I think all the family members that I work with have a sense of hope that there is always that slight chance that their missing person might show up someday. I never take it away from them. I think it's really important to, to let them have that. Reporting for Northern Michigan's News Leader, I'm Evan Dean.